Greenwood program with a famous hit and a miss and starring that long, lovable lady, Charlotte Greenwood. <laughs> the next sound you hear will be a vacuum cleaner in a little frame house at 114 North Hinkle Street in Cranston, Connecticut. The long thing handle of the vacuum cleaner, which is named Hoover, is in the capable hands of a long, thin lady named Greenwood. Pinky, yes, Charlotte. Will you please lift up the sofa for me? Sure. I still think you ought to listen to us, Charlotte. Now, Jane, the subject is slow. But it seems to me that. the way I feel about it. But Jane said I didn't hear, but I agree with her 100 percent. I know what you said. I know what you said, and I don't agree. Oh, but you do need a rest, pal. If you should go to New York, it isn't right you should always feel like... So why shouldn't you? You know, Charlotte, I've been thinking that you want to... And I'd be mighty grateful. <laughs> if any more is said on this subject, I'll start the vacuum cleaner again. Well, I wasn't saying anything about your trip to New York. Well, then what were you saying? I was saying that I'd like to put down this sofa. <laughs> oh, Pinky, oh, I am sorry. I forgot you were holding a do-putter down. Oh, Charlotte, want to tell you something? No, Mrs. Fitz. Come on, Hoover, do your stuff. <laughs> Babbling about. I heard every word you said. I'm all ears. Yes, you and Radar. <laughs> you simply must go. I went to New York when I was a little girl. You did, Mrs. Pig. Wasn't it tiresome riding in that covered wagon? <laughs> I didn't want to make that trip to New York. Well, then why don't you? Because the government has asked us not to travel. But it's only two hours from Cranston to New York by train. You don't have to tell me how long it is. I've been doing it every year. Yes, you always come back feeling marvelous. After all, you only stay one day. One day and you're feeling marvelous? What's there, a boyfriend? <laughs> no, Veronica. But every year, Charlotte has taken a one-day excursion to New York City. She has her hair done, goes on a shopping spree. Dines at a swanky restaurant, visits a hip show, and catches a 1242 out of New York to Cranston that same night. She comes back a new woman. Not new. Just recap. I <laughs> guess <laughs> you shouldn't deny yourself, child. Why should I go barging off on a holiday? Well, we get a day off every week, and you don't get any time off from housework. Oh, think of it, Charlotte. A hairdo at Madame Yvette. The shops on Fifth Avenue, marinated herring at Lindsay. <laughs> yeah, they tell me Oklahoma's a great show, Charlotte. Beautiful girls. So what? Beautiful boys, too. <laughs> Say, you people aren't trying to tempt me, are you? Oh, what do you mean? Well, don't give up. I'm getting tempted. <laughs> Mob here in the station. I guess people aren't paying much attention to the signs that say don't travel. You know, I don't feel so guilty just going to New York. Now leaving on track for the Washington, Washington, Pittsburgh, has a recipe. Four mouth following, Hoosby, West Catherine, four benignity, he gets nicked at the mouth. Four Catherine, real falsity, passengers, go to the man's force of trade at 2.30 shot. <laughs> That's Sounds like my radio set. <laughs> Fascinating talker, isn't he? You go get your ticket, Charles. We'll wait here for you. All right, hold my lunch basket. Golly, what a line. 
Uh, pardon me, sir. Is this line waiting for tickets to New York? No, lady. We love Cranston. We're just standing in line like this because we like to be together. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? You know, you look like such a nice group of people. I think I'll just join you. Uh, into the line, Wait, lady. Sir, Stop trying to crash yet. Oh, not such a nice group after all. Hey, lady, you can get in front of me. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to meet a gentleman. I'm not a gentleman, lady. It's just that with you standing next to me, I think I can get a child past their ticket. <laughs> I might have known. Next, next, who's next? I am. I'm sorry, lady. We ain't got no berth you could fit into. I don't need a berth, wise guy. I want a round-trip ticket to New York with a seat near the window. Lady, you're liable to wind up with a seat outside the window. <laughs> Or maybe outside the window without any seat at all. Here's your ticket and you have my sympathy. So here's your money. Your train leaves right away. Next, victim. Oh, here you are, Josh. We were afraid you'd lose it in the car. Did you get the ticket? Yes, I got it all right, but I didn't like the ticket man's attitude. He seemed sorry to see me go. I'll be right back for the best. We went heavily, Virginia, for the top of her. Put this to father, he can see what's so far today. I'll tell you. That must be my train. Now, all I have to do is find Track Ophelgaus. Uh-huh. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, all. Goodbye, Charlotte. Watch out for traffic in New York. Don't forget to see Oklahoma. Goodbye. Goodbye. Wait, you forgot your line. Oh, has she gone? Compare Pepsodent results. No matter what leading tooth powder you are using now, Pepsodent tooth powder with Arium will make your teeth brighter. Pepsodent makes this unqualified promise to you without fear of contradiction. For test after test proves, Pepsodent powder with Arium makes teeth far brighter. Test by impartial laboratories, test in dental clinics, test on identical twins in their homes. Yes, test after test, piles up the evidence proving this one unshakable fact. Quote, Pepsodent powder produces a luster on teeth twice as bright as the average of all other leading brands, brighter than any of them, bar none. Pepsodent and only Pepsodent can make that quoted statement. And remember, Pepsodent and only Pepsodent contains irium, the patented cleansing ingredient you get in the soft, smooth, refreshing powder. Change to Pepsodent powder with Arium. Use it every day and see Pepsodent's promise come true for you. It's the truth. Pepsodent powder with Arium will make your teeth far brighter. T-E-C-S-O-T-E-N-T, South Pepsodent. You Pepsodent. You Pepsodent. And now the famous hits in a mess sing Chattanooga Choo-Choo. <laughs> Pardon me, boy. Look out for
He's gonna try and feel like hell and that'll never go. So we saw Charlotte Greenwood, she was swept along by a hysterical human tide and shoved into a railroad train jammed with passengers and baggage. She's been on that train now for almost two hours. Hang on, everybody. We're starting up again. Watch out for that log. It's going to come down again. Look out. Oh, 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 oh. out of this golf bag. <laughs> At your service, madam. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. You're quite welcome. This is rather a difficult trip, isn't it? No, this isn't a trip. This is a nightmare. Ah, oh! oh, say, soldier. Yes, ma'am. Would you mind taking that bayonet off your rifle? <laughs> oh, sure, lady. Thank you. I was wondering, madam, if you'd care to join me for lunch in the dining car. I'm so hungry, I'd join a cannibal for lunch. Splendid. But how do we get past all these people to the dining car? And when we get there, how do we get into it? And when we get into it, how do we get food? Well, I haven't the slightest idea, madam, but I had to ask you anyway. You see, I'm a wolf. <laughs> yes, I... <laughs> I noticed your fangs. <laughs> It sure is crowded, isn't it? I can't move a muscle. Mm, I can't move and I haven't got a muscle. <laughs> oh, I've never been so hungry in my life. And these my trust you and just down since I closed my green soup and it's got a pop like crazy in the head. Who the last? Hey, mister, over here. How am I going to get over there, lady? Now, don't get technical. I'm starving. Just throw me something. Anything. Okay, here it comes. You get it? Yes, I got it. I'm starving, and he throws me a copy of the Reader's Digest. <laughs> I want to read. I don't want to eat. I'm sorry, but you ain't done nothing to eat. I want to eat. I don't want to read. <laughs> <laughs> Something else you haven't got. Oh, surely. Those from salad and spice up a pie ham and eggs. Oh, I can't stand much more of that. I'm getting hungry. I'm, I'm really so weak from hunger. Madam, I hope you're not going to faint. No, I can't faint here. There isn't room to fall down. <laughs> Look out, we're stopping again. Watch out, the bag. Hold the luggage. Careful, hang on. Look out. Well, let it come. There's more room in that golf bag anyway. Oh, my foot! Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, get me out of here. Wow! You know, travel used to be broadening, but nowadays it's just flattening. Up there. Why, no, it isn't. Is it yours, sir? No, it ain't mine. Yeah, uh, whose bundle is it? it? Isn't anybody's bundle, it's me. <laughs> I'm the bundle. Yes, well, now look here, lady, you can't ride up there in the baggage rack. That's what I said when I first looked at it, but here I am. <laughs> well, uh, couldn't you stand up? No, there isn't any standing room left. Thank you. Well, uh, Confidentially, there is a little... Well, how do I get through all these people to get to this space? <laughs> well, uh, don't ask me, lady. I'm, uh, I'm supposed to collect tickets on this whole train, but I ain't been able to get out of this car for two days. 
Can't I just stay up here a little while longer? You know, we're due to arrive almost any minute. Due to arrive? Lady, we ain't left yet. Do you mean to tell me we're still in Cranston? Well. But I felt this train move several times. I've got scars to prove it. Yes, we was just picking cars, that's all. They're standing on the side in just a mile to Cranston Depot right now, waiting for a troop train to pass. But I've only got the day to spend in New York, and now three hours are gone, and we haven't even left yet. Lady, did you say New York? That's what I said. This train don't go to New York, goes to Boston. Boston? Boston? Did somebody say Boston? This is where I get off. How about Boston? Hold it, hold it, everybody. This ain't Boston. It's still Cranston. Back to you, see. What you trying to do, lady? Start the stampede? But I don't want to go to Boston. I want to go to New York. Well, I don't see how you got on this train. Well, what's worrying me is how I'm going to get off. No matter what leading tooth powder you are using now, Pestilent Tooth Powder with Irium will make your teeth brighter. No matter who tests it, no matter where or when, Pestilent Powder with Irium makes teeth far brighter. Hundreds of tests by impartial scientific laboratories, by dental clinics, by identical twins, have produced overwhelming evidence for this one unshakable fact. Quote, Pestilent Powder produces a luster on teeth twice as bright as the average of all other leading brands, brighter than any of them, bar none. Compare Pepsodent Crunch. Compare Pepsodent Results. Remember, Pepsodent and only Pepsodent contains Irium, the exclusive patented cleansing ingredient. Get Pepsodent powder with Irium. Use it daily and see it make your teeth brighter. Yes, it's the truth. Scientific findings show it. Millions of Pepsodent users know it. Pepsodent powder with irium makes teeth far brighter. Discovering that she was on the wrong train, Charlotte heroically struggled through the crowd of passengers and got off, minus her hat and a few trimmings from her dress. We find her now trudging down the track a mile from the Cranston Depot. Oh, 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 would you like to go there? Oh, 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 would you like to go there? Uh-oh. Holy smokes, is that you, Mr. Greenwood? Hello, Mike, it's me, all right. What's the matter? You look like a freight train just went over you. <laughs> but at first, I just got out of a passenger train. You were forced to show us here on the track. Oh, I'm walking back to Cranston. It's a whole mile to Cranston, and the sun is very tired. Yes, I know. Well, it's nice to see you, Miss Greenwood. Goodbye. Well, Mike, wait a minute. Uh, that train that you're riding on there, can I get on it? It's hung car. It's a strictly against the rules. Anybody ride on this for employee? Yeah, well, well, what's the rule among old friends? Any place, no room at here for a lady. It's room for one more man to pump by the side of saddle and make the car go faster. Uh, I get it. Of course, you're very tall lady. You should make very good shank car pumper. Bend down far, reach up high, bend down far, reach up high. Well, it's better than walking. Let me on. Okay. You ready to start pumping? Let it go. Right, you pump very good, you dream horse. Never mind talking, Mike. I'm having enough trouble to pump this handle. I expect to strike oil any minute. <laughs> Okay, Miss Greenwood, there we are, trying some people all out. You're going to stop pumping now. The college is standing still. Yeah, I know it's standing still, but you're wrong. I can't stop pumping. <laughs> I'm very sorry you hit your head on the bridge like that. That's the first time anybody ever hit his head on the bridge, you know. Yes, well, after all, when they built it, they didn't expect anything higher than a locomotive to go under it. <laughs> well, thanks, Mike. I'll find the train to New York myself. <laughs> Sergeant, the train loaded. Yes, sir. All on board, present and accounted for, sir. Well. Except one well. whack. Well, marker AWOL. We can't well. wait for him. Yes, sir. The train's got to go on schedule. I'm on yes, the engineer. The order to proceed. Yes, sir. Wait, wait for me. Wait, wait for me. Just step on it. This train is going to New York, isn't it? Yeah, grab my ear. Come on, I'll pull you on. Okay. You're a lucky day, sister. You just made it. Yeah. Thanks to you. 
You were almost A-W-L. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but that's what I feel like. <laughs> hey, how come you're out of, the, out of your uniform? Huh? Your uniform, where is it? Well, I know this was messy in my dress, and it's all mussed up a bit, but a gentleman wouldn't make wise cracks about it. I ain't no gentleman. I'm a sergeant. <laughs> Aren't you a whack? Say, what kind of a train is this? The proof train. Oh, well, what do I care? As long as it's going to New York, that's where I get off. Lady, nobody gets off this train in New York. It's sealed. We march right out of the train onto a transport headed overseas. <laughs> overseas? But uh, all I want to do is go to New York. Oh, how do I get out of here? Tell you what, lady. There's a New York train standing on the side and down the line waiting for us to pass. We'll be rolling it kind of fast when we go by this. But look, if you want to make a jump for it, I think you can make it. Yeah, well, I appreciate your confidence. Of course, the ground is kind of hard. Yes, I know, but on the other hand, the Atlantic Ocean is kind of wet. Yes, ticket. Ticket, please. Oh, conductor, a woman just jumped off that train the past. No, you don't say. Yeah, and she's trying to get on this train. She's pushing her way into the back of this car now. Well, I'll have to put a stop to that. Say, uh, lady, you can't get on this train. It's full. You? Oh, you again. Oh, don't tell me I went all through that only to get on the wrong train again. You know, lady, funny thing. What is? Uh, you were right in the first place. This train, train is going to New York. I'm on the wrong train. <laughs> That's a laugh, ain't it? <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> but I don't see how you can find any place to stand now. That two new passengers since you got off and the engine is left. Oh, there must be some place, some little spot. And I'll find it if it's the last thing I do. I'm going to New York City if I have to ride in the boiler. <laughs> You know, they always lock that door when the train's in the station. <laughs> how, how would I know? That's the first time I ever traveled in a broom closet. <laughs> how long have I been in there? Well, this train put in about 8 o'clock tonight. Only 7 hours late this time. And right now it's 1240. And this is New York City. 1240? My train for Cranston leaves at 1242? Yep, that's it. Right on the next track, lady. Oh, I've got to make that train. I can't stay here overnight. I've got to get back to Cranston. Porter? Oh, Porter? Yes, ma'am. Oh, is, is this the 1242 for Cranston? Yes, yeah, ma'am. Well, I've got to get on board right away. But there ain't no more room, ma'am. I'm supposed to work this trip, and I can't even get on. <laughs> oh, but I've got to get on. Well, you can see for yourself, ma'am. Folks are hanging on the steps now. Tell you what, though, there's an extra freight car here, and maybe you can sneak into it. Oh, it's a pleasure. Give me a hand, will you? Yes. Hey, ma'am. Here you go. Oh. Oh, thanks a million. Look at that. Six feet and one step. <laughs> All right, now, you can close the door now. You. My, it's dark in here. Yes. Good luck. Hi, I hope the rest of you folks in this car don't mind my squeezing in like this. <laughs> well, now, that's mighty sweet of you, girls. <laughs> The state up and down the station leader. I should say so, Jane. I'll bet she's having a wonderful time in New York all day. That was a great idea we had making her take this one day holiday. Bet she feels like a new woman. Train leading us back to Telephone. Wilson, Herbert Irene, Mississippi, Cabin River City. Well, she's lost. I'm the train now. I wonder what car she's in. Oh, my goodness, Mrs. Pitts, look at the people pouring out just like cattle. If you're referring to that freight car, those are cattle. <laughs> God, one of them looks awful thin. <laughs> or is that a giraffe? Casey, it's, it's Charlotte. Charlotte. Charlotte? Charlotte? What's happening? Oh, Charlotte, darling, to me it doesn't look like your cattle rest. 
Charlotte, you look like something the baggage department got hold of. Oh, Charlotte, say something. Are you all right? Please talk to us. Oh, the point of finger, so that we got the finger, is that with never belly. Radio don't tell it, the papers write about it, is that with never belly. They say stay off the trains and you'll be patriotic. But I say if you want to ride, you must be idiotic. Take a tip from me, stay home. Take a tip from me, don't roll. You must in a hurry for a seat, and then you hear that bell to eat. You leave your seat to eat, your beef, there's nothing to eat. You've lost your seat, the rest of the trip you're on your feet. Take a tip from me, stay home. Finally, you find a seat. You say to yourself, this can be deep. This seat as complete as a hotel suite. But the porter says it's taken. You ask the porter for another chair. He looks at you and he says, well, hey. Then he gives you that cold feet there. But you just can't stop shaking. Take a tip from me, stay home. Take a tip from me, don't go. It's time to sleep, you leave your place before you sleep. You wash your face, you wash your face. Go back to your place, you clean your face, but you've lost your place. The rest of the trip, you're off your base. Take a tip from me, stay home. tonight, but we invite you to come over next Tuesday. This is Wendell Niles saying the door is never locked at 114 Hinkle Street. And so until next Tuesday at the very same time, this is Charlotte Dean was saying, so long, friends, until we meet again, so long, neighbor, till next Tuesday, I'll just say, so long. This is the National Broadcasting Company.